right so when the economic activities you know increased heavily so it means if i now if you ask me sir how much amount that you are investing see i am investing much but i don't to be honest i don't have extra time to manage my portfolio right to manage my portfolio to check the equities or to check the bonds or to check the golds or any other instrument to evaluate it to do the analysis and to invest i don't have that time so definitely i am now looking for portfolio management service so it means who offer that prime brokers offer it who offer that service prime brokers offer it like goldman sachs jp morgan ms they offer it portfolio management services under hedge fund services or alternative investment services alternative investment management services under aims or under pms most of the brokers they offer services to the investors like me and if you see by 2030 the people like who are earning this much they'll earn around 1 to 2 crore for per month why so if you see my income how that i i uh, i have uh, you know uh, if you see the growth in my income 10th time or 10th x that you would say right the income that's grown uh, 3500 per per month to 3000 uh, 3 lakhs 50000 for per month if you see the growth in in my income the similar way if you see around 30 to 35 lakhs that i can earn for per month in upcoming days and if you if you just compound it then around it would be 1.2 to 1.3 cr means around 10 million that i can earn for per month and that's what automatically when the income multiplies that doesn't make sense to invest in mutual funds right because my risk capacity automatically it will increase correct and when you have a high risk capacity then always we look for a hedge funds where you would get the dedicated sources dedicated investment manager who can fulfill your demand the reason is when i earn high money let's say on 3 lakh 50000 here i can only take the risk up to 10% for per month right so might be here that i can take the risk of 30% because my income is very high so i don't care about so i can easily invest around 10 to 20 crores in my any any uh, you know investment schemes or i can allocate dedicated investment manager who can help me to generate 10 to 15% alpha on my investment so try to understand this also those are the fundamentals so on the basis of fundamentals that i'm talking about i have done some sort of research on hedge fund mutual fund and private equity or fund of fund business so uh, in upcoming time people kind of or uh, the uh, the sources kind of like they will have a money but they required the talented or experienced fund account uh, sorry uh the fund managers who can help them to generate the alpha for them and when automatically if you see this bracket goes high then fund activities so it means reporting activities trade processing activities corporate actions distribution activities reporting activities on a quarterly basis that activities automatically increase and when the activities increase so it means a scope for a fund accounting reporting auditing compliance automatically goes high so there is a linkage between all three so you should understand that as well right so when i say investment activities increase automatically that affect on fund admin activities so here activities would be financial reporting fr auditing accounting compliance right under accounting that you might see or extra activities would be kind of normal reporting also so here that you might see different activities middle office operations trade processing settlement right or uh, corporate action processing
इनकम प्रोसेसिंग फीस सो ऑटोमेटिकली दिस वैन यूर इन्वेस्टमेंट एक्टिविटीज इंक्रीज दैट विल अफेक्ट ऑन फंड एडमिन एक्टिविटीज एंड फंड एडमिन एक्टिविटीज वेन गोज यू नो इंक्रीज देन ऑटोमेटिकली दैट विल अफेक्ट ऑन दी द स्कोप और अपॉर्चुनिटीज दैट यू गाइज आर लुकिंग right so it means for a next see at the moment if you ask me uh, if i take the example of india this general information is also very important guys if you want to be a smart working professional or if you want to like earn you know high packages so you should always you know do some analysis of this industry also so initially we had a scope for a mortgage industry because most of the businesses or loan agencies they were offering very high packages to the mortgage analyst if i take the example of 2012 or 2013 why because after the great recession means after the 2008 so american government uh, were announcing lot of modification policies or benefits under the different different there you know uh, the dodd frank act or maybe different loan schemes and all and that's what there was a huge economic activities under the uh, us mortgage sector and that's what most of the companies like tcs infosys or companies like normal auditing firms reporting firms they used to be a part of this mortgage industry so they had a lot of uh, the activities and that's what they were offering high packages but at the moment now if you talk me so there is a worst phase is going on in this sector right so nobody is offering more salaries and all i was the part of this mortgage industry also so i was earning well but at the moment like there is no growth so now growth is kind of stuck or stagnant no scope as such right so similar way there was a one more sector insurance so in a pandemic most of the insurance companies badly affected the revenues and all and that's what the revenues everything that is under pressure and the reason is that affected on the opportunities of insurance companies also so now how they can mitigate the cost then of course through salaries and all economic activities are very high under insurance sector also but the salary you cannot expect you cannot expect high salaries go and talk with insurance analyst go and check with any 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 your friend or colleague who are working under the mortgage right go and check with them so it means for you those two sectors are like not the option at the moment and then might be that you will have questions of what if about retail banking retail banking it means marketing job guys retail banking it means marketing job again so for this role nobody offer high or attractive packages max to max you would see 5 to 6 lakh or 1 million for per year max to max us and uk i know your salary package is around 60 to 70 uh, 1000 or case you know euros or dollar that you would expect here most of the time companies for a retail banking operations like marketing or uh, the normal kyc stuff or servicing stuff that you would see very low packages and on top of that so they might offer you some bonuses and all so it means again this sector is kind of also uh, not the best option for your career right so now then what are the sir, different sectors that i can target so one big sector that you have is invest uh, sorry fund admin activities so it means fund admin and as i said investment activities so it means investment banks like here that you can target gs goldman sachs jp morgan bny nt right barclays hsbc so you can target those bank because they provide support to the fund admins why the reason is when the fund admin purchase any uh, any securities bonds debentures or any other things they required investment bankers who can provide end to end support to them who can even provide research analysis who can help to merger and acquisitions who can help to even to distribute dividends income or who can even provide margins on collateral and all so investment managers they closely work with the investment banks so it means you can target investment banks or else you can target companies like apex citco intertrust 
and ireland is the hub for you know fund admin activities so you can check the list of companies who are working there as a fund admin and you can target those companies fund admin who are working under fund admin space and here also you would see trade processing middle office operations settlement right those business lines which comes under accounting here that you would expect good work life balance good work life balance it means you can manage your job within within uh, 9 to 10 hours that you can manage with considering your 1 hours uh, or one, one and a half hours break also right so that you can manage easily but with reporting quarterly would be very hell with financial reporting compliance reporting regulatory reporting kind of your uh, life would be very hell right and if you're working on on top of that if you're working on end-to-end -end accounting end to end it means you will have to manage all the activities so that becomes very difficult to manage the reason is every task there would be deadline there would be pre you know set deadline and to manage that deadline and to work on multiple tasks to check it validate that's become very difficult and at the moment like fund accountant they are facing same challenge when they are working on end to end it means they will have to stretch a lot to manage the deadlines of each and every activities that's the big challenge so you might see you know big development in this space also in terms of you know managing activities and all because uh, earlier the automation wasn't allowed or the uh, the macros wasn't allowed in banking or this space but now uh, in my even organization so we have worked on few macros or you know the automation part and that is helping a lot so you might see uh, your reporting or uh, processing stuff or settlement stuff it can be automated and your job only to do some analysis or QC quality checks so you might see that also right so that's how guys you can you know evaluate uh, you know uh, market or business or segment sector or companies and then after you can target to that sector here you would see big scope there is no doubt and when we say scope it means you would see high salaries as well and trust me always always try to understand it if someone is paying high salaries it means there ought to be a lot of pressure that doesn't mean that you will get salaries and as well as you will enjoy everything no that never happened at all right cost comes with lot of responsibilities or i would say you know uh, work pressure everything means everything if you are if you are asking for a high cost of your uh, skills whatever that you have then definitely you would see high workload and responsibilities correct and at the moment like era that if you see the people they are not ready to spend more than eight hours and that's what the high attrition already is heading towards this fund admin sector 70 to 80 percent people they are leaving jobs who are, who are the part of this fund admin and now they don't want fund admin sector the reason is just because of they are not happy with the the work they are they are happy with the work that salaries and all because the sector is paying high salaries but the people like who are the part of this industry they are not happy with the work and life balance that's the other side of this so you would see here and there but again that would be your call if you want to be a part of this sector then join it if you want salaries or financial growth if you're looking for then you can target if you don't want this growth then you can you can hear then uh, you can target the investment banks here you would see better life at least so standard working hours also that you would expect because investment with the investment banks their budget would be high their model is kind of transaction based model for per transactions they charge fees right they don't care about annual fees and all and that's what they would be in profit if i take the example of nt they are in profit if i take the example of hsbc bnp they are in profit so go and check their balance sheets as well right so that depends so where you want to and here you would see good work life balance then instead targeting to the companies like fund admin so why don't you target the investment banks then prepare for investment banks then see you with the investment banks also you're going to work on fund accounting stuff but that would be something different right validation processing settlement confirmation communication processing releasing 
that would be your prime responsibilities so you can target this sector also right so now i hope you got a good understanding about this sector what you want to do or what you not so accordingly now you can think about it okay any question so far any on this anyone anyone has any question very clear now very thank clear you. thank you so now you can yeah, take the decision yeah go ahead yeah i have one more question. people are saying if you are good at, at excel then you know probably you can like uh, better to doing this uh, from the content job like you can like you said this, this uh if you are you know how to do macro very well in excel then you can automate a lot of things yeah so automation is already you know uh, uh, at a very high level the most of the companies they are facing attrition and that's what they're planning how they can automate the activities they want to reduce the dependency right ultimately uh, the job it should be completed under you know any circumstances no matter what whether it should be done by the robot or it should be done by the human because uh, as i said like attrition it means when the people let's say 10 people if they joined any company around eight people they are leaving the job and that is creating extra work pressure on the other human resources who want to continue with that particular organization right and that's the another big challenge and that's what you would see the automation not at a hundred percent which is not possible at all and regulator also will not allow it but to some extent that you would see automation in this sector also but you don't need to worry about anything and uh, like as i said if you have a strong accounting skills strong product knowledge how the products works like equity bonds debentures accounting skills like you know debit credit rules pnl balance sheet or uh, different concept how that works then you can manage your fund accounting jobs too but when you when you manage your job then your managers they allocate more and more funds to you that's the another challenge why because of attrition so it means talent is also not enough at the moment to be a part of this industry when you complete two funds, your manager will allocate extra two more. Why? The attrition is high and you are managing it. So it means they believe like you should manage two more, three more fund extra. And they don't care at all whether you are working eight hours, nine hours, ten hours or fifteen hours. Yeah. In, in my so in case, case... Yeah, just you said that if you, they, they, they see you that you'll be able to manage the job that you are doing now, they will give you more. In that case, maybe you just know showing them you are, you know, just do your job, but know that it's super good. If you know, you understand what I mean. <laughs> if, if, if I take my <laughs> example, like, uh, so initially I was used to as a manager, so I'm also processing it. So I used to manage five funds. My senior management, like directors, senior directors, because apart from that, I'm managing five teams, right? to manage 114 people it's not an easy job and apart from that at an individual level 20 to 25 percent time that i'm spending on production also then management requested like why don't you manage 10 funds along with your normal jobs so see this means their, their expectation would automatically exceeds that that really kind of you know um, that create a lot of you know pressure extra additional pressure and that's what i'm spending more than 15 hours right to manage production to manage people issues to manage client calls to manage different deadlines for a different different activities to handle the escalations to handle the uh, handle the uh, automation projects I mean side by side i'm working on automation projects to handle the training part for a cross project for 114 people means to work on modules training modules and to say it. so i am working on a number of activities 15 hours are also less i am feeling like that but depends on your uh, depends depends on your uh, 
what I would say uh, requirement depends on your priorities depends on your rules and responsibilities right so that's how uh, you can find even uh, under fund accounting also that you might see sometime the people they are enjoying their you know uh, jobs or activities whatever that they are doing that also you would see so that depends but target the investment banks if you are looking for work life balance and if you are looking for only money then target the companies like this apex etco intertrust or uh, vartusa or there are many more companies in ireland so just get the list of those companies and target those if you are looking for money then target this companies if you are looking for a work life balance then you can target this companies at least in india so the companies like nt gs they are offering better work life balance better it means uh, that within a 10 10 to 12 hours your job will be completed kind of that right with annual bonuses and all but here they are offering high packages but work life balance would be very worst and across globe not only in india so that is happening with this sector okay anyways this wasn't the topic for a discussion but as you you were asking question on this so i thought like explain and discuss so that you will have a better understanding and then on the basis of that you can take the decisions and that's what we covered this portion okay so uh, today's topic was the balance it okay so already i have prepared something so to save our time okay so uh, shall we start guys are you ready yes no maybe yes, i want i want to see you your you know energy guys okay when you are in a session you should here with the uh, full of energy okay so uh when we talk about balance it guys okay so there would be two sides one which is asset side right this should be your one side and another would be your liability side so under liability you would see two segment one is share capital and another one is your liabilities right when we say share capital it means for a fund what we record we record outstanding units value so outstanding units value it means what exactly what do you want to say outstanding units value it means the redemption sorry subscriptions or the share capital sorry oops i lost everything how can i recover them anyways and fortunately we lost the data okay no problem so uh, when we say when we say outstanding outstanding uh, share capital so it means we have received outstanding you can write it down this one outstanding share capital outstanding share capital so here what is happening here why the page is changing so under hedge fund or mutual fund that you would see we received request for a subscriptions right and under mutual fund sorry private equity we received request as a commitment or share capital directly here we don't allocate any units so that portion if 
it is fully subscribed if it is fully subscribed this this portion if it is fully subscribed by the investors by the investors then that would be your outstanding units or outstanding capital means investors they are holding the value in short investors they are holding the value if they are holding the value then that would be the part of your liability side liability side so are you clear on this where we can record liability side it means you need to record it as a outstanding share capital under that if it is a unit then you can directly record the units units into value let's say 1000 units are outstanding and per unit value is 100 then your total outstanding share capital would be this that you need to record and under share capital let's say a investor contribute 100 you need to record 100 b investor contributed let's say 9000 you need to record 9000 so that's how you can record the uh, outstanding share capital under the you know uh, liability side of fund balance it right so this is the main component guys it's a main component it means that help you to raise the fund this is a fund raising activity right this is a fund raising activity fund raising activity so which we raise funds through subscriptions or else through share capital right and that we invest into different assets like bonds debentures then different different financial instruments so we record that into different financial instrument but for us the important is so we should know it why we record you know subscriptions and share capital under outstanding share capital in the balance sheet of a fund the reason is that outstanding it means investors they are holding the value of that particular units or that particular share capital or that particular investment of which you have a pool of investment which you have because hedge fund and private equities those are like pool of investment pool of investment and this pool of investment value is who is holding the investors are holding the value of this particular pool and that's what share capital outstanding share capital that we record it to the asset side sorry liability side of balance sheet any question any question on this part no right okay so other term that is the different liabilities different liabilities it means when we talk about liabilities when we talk about liabilities so that you would see one portion would be so which we have discussed share capital right we have discussed about share capital where so uh, units and shares units and uh the um, share capital share capital so that we record the other side is liabilities current liabilities and long term liabilities long term liabilities when we say current liabilities that would be your total payables sir so what are total payables let's say admin fees right admin fees expense to whatever expense which you see that needs to be paid not immediately but maybe after one month or two months 
for any you know near duration or term that you will have to pay it or fund will have to pay it so those would be your total payables which you need to record then any outstanding expense outstanding expense outstanding and payable both are same if you see the meaning sometime that you would say outstanding word sometime you would say payable payable or outstanding those are same which are it to pay expenses it means which has been incurred if i take the example of rent rent let's say for this particular month which is incurred around 1000 dollar that it to pay so that is outstanding one so we'll pay in in upcoming time right or maybe we'll pay in next accounting period or next month or next quarter right so that's how we prepare the uh, you know current liability so all payables that we record to the uh, liability side of a balance sheet and apart from that if you see if we have received any subscription in advance that also we record it to the current liability side that that is also part of your current liabilities when you received extra subscription so let's say here only that you wanted 100 unit into 100 let's say th that you wanted this one this one but you received this was the original the units or requirement was but you received for 100 units you received this one so you received around 12,000 so 2,000 which you have received extra so you cannot convert this into share capital that you need to return it so that would be your current liabilities right that you need to return to the investor back or investors if there are multiple investors then you can see investors back right so that also comes under your current liability so why this is important so the reason is if you don't know where to record or how to record and why we are recording then you might see difficulties right you might see difficulties while recording the financial transactions in the books of fund so that's what it becomes very very essential to understand where we record the terms and why we record it so when we say advance it means we have received in advance so that you need to return it out to the investor back that is investors money correct so long term liabilities here for a fund if i talk about fund so hardly that you would see uh, that you would see where fund uh, raised money through loans this particular term is or the raising money through loans is not allowed right it is not allowed but still few countries like blacklisted countries where the regulations are not in place so there you might see where they are allowed to raise the money through loans and that becomes the part of your long term liabilities this is again i'm saying this is not allowed in india the mutual funds hedge funds they are not allowed to uh, raise the money or as a loans and to invest in you know stock market or bond market which is not allowed but few countries where that you might see where they are allowed to raise loans and invest in the financial market instrument again the important aspect here is important aspect here is all liabilities all liabilities means all liabilities again write it down guys don't rely on recording sometime so that you would see due to technical issues and all so your record sessions uh, that haven't been recorded well so you might see that and that's what you need to write it down each and everything with me all liabilities that would be a credit balance that would be your credit balance so why credit balance now if i say now if i say you need to uh, raise capital or let's say you have raised capital you have received received subscription from a investor for 10000 so how will you prepare the accounting entry can anyone tell me 
come on guys subscription account debit to a investor subscription account debit to a investor a investor why a investor we are receiving from the a we are receiving from the a investor a investor so according to the personal accounting rule hmm but if we have received it then that is the part of your share capital right then doesn't make sense to apply personal accounting rule directly you need to apply the uh, real accounting rule and again here it it would be combination of your real and personal accounting rule also that share capital is also personal accounting okay personal account okay mm. share capital is also part of your personal account so your accounting entry would be as i said like all liabilities would be your credit balance all liabilities at simple you don't need to mug up anything if you know if you know like all the liabilities would be the credit side then prepare the entry when i say received received money right received subscription then you have received cash when we say received already we have discussed about it received when we say received and paid it means by default there would be cash involved cash and bank or in short cash account or bank account debit to share capital account see how the simple is because you can link this all liabilities all liabilities would be your credit balance all liabilities would be your credit balance as it is at a credit side that you need to record right all 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 liabilities would be the part of your credit side so you need to update that at a credit side and whatever other leg would be assets or any other things if you see that by default that would be your debited by default that would be your debited any question so far so now you can mean as an assignment you can prepare the accounting entries for all this the other liabilities or other items take the or i'll send you the questions then you can prepare the you know uh, <clears throat> those questions and send it to me back as an assignment right so here the important is all liabilities that would be the part of your cash bal uh, sorry credit side okay <clears throat> so uh might be that you you may expect questions in a interview also or while doing accounting that you would expect questions in a way where uh, let's say <clears throat> you need to prepare the uh, that subscription part that subscription part in a way where the your accounting entry would be your subscriptions receivables by means you need to create the subscriptions that that also might you would see subscriptions receivable subscription receivable or cash both are the part of your assets then assets will be debited why again and again we are discussing this accounting rule the reason is practice so your practice automatically your practice will be you know uh, done with me and that's what i am again and again with every statement i am repeating the same accounting rules so in future you don't need to mug up anything so you can also practice in this way right you don't need to put extra efforts to uh, mug up the accounting entries and all right so subscription receivable account debit to share capital account credit whatever the balance would be let's say 10000 and when you actually received subscription receivable then you need to just reverse that subscription receivable when you received cash so cash received through bank cash and bank account debit to subscription 
रिसीवेबल अकाउंट क्रेडिट दिस सब्सक्रिप्शन डेबिट एंड दिस क्रेडिट ऑटोमेटिकली इट विल ऑप्शेट सो नो इम्पैक्ट ऑन योर फिनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एंड योर ओरिजिनल एंट्री वुड बी कैश अकाउंट डेबिट टू शेयर कैपिटल अकाउंट ओनली दिस ओरिजिनल एंट्री विच यू वुड सी राइट एंड वॉट एंट्री वी प्रिपेड देन इफ यू सी हियर ऑन अ फर्स्ट लाइफ कैश एंड बैंक अकाउंट डेबिट टू शेयर कैपिटल अकाउंट राइट सेम एंट्री वी प्रिपेड इट हियर सेम एंट्री दर इज नो चेंज इन इट बट वेन द सब्सक्रिप्शन कम इन टू पिक्चर सो इट मीन्स इनिशियली विल रिसीव सब्सक्रिप्शन मनी or will only receive the subscription request so that we need to confirm it and once the request actually get settled in bank or money reflected in bank then you can reverse the subscription receivables and your main entry would be again cash and bank account debit to share capital account so you can prepare the accounting entries for a rest of the items and see whether you guys are uh, able to prepare the accounting entries or not if you face any challenges you can text me i'll i'll take up that you know in next session okay so uh, the liabilities was the one leg that i wanted to discuss so you can now ask questions on this portion if you have any question as such otherwise we'll start to the assets portion we'll start to the assets portion any question guys no okay okay great so uh here then the other the other means again apart from liability so we have a other side of the balance it is assets right so assets has two types long term assets current assets and long term assets long term assets your current assets all receivables like dividend receivables you can write it down interest payment receivables income from security sbl income from foreign entity foreign company sbl or other sources or like swaps and all that also you can record it right so that would be the part of your current assets apart from that option trades future right any quarterly swaps settlement that also would be the part of your current assets intraday trading or you can apply the goods rule here if you are holding the securities for 5 days one week one month or within a one year that you can treat as a goods because you have intention to sell it out in the market right so those would be your other side of you know current assets so it means other one would be receivables and other one would be your the assets which you are looking for a short term gain you are looking for a short term gain write it down those are very important ones so all information that you can see while preparing the financial statements while preparing the financial statements so you should know it each and everything so it's a very very important one so if you see we have a example as well already we have discussed about it or we have seen few things anyways so i'll i'll send you that example also if you want 
go and check it or I'll add that into the application. Go and check that. So you would see all this categorization. So it's a very important, so you should know where we record, how we record, right? Then long-term assets. Long-term assets, it means the investment here. We are talking about investment. Investment in investment in financial instrument like stocks, bonds, derivatives, like forward contracts, or uh, it can be your long term, you know, any options if you are carrying, it can be any instrument if it is for investment purpose that you can record it or any FX contracts, any debt obligations, loans or any other, any other instrument. any other instrument if you see any other instrument that also you need to record it to the asset sides of balance it right assets sides of balance it so you can prepare the accounting entries for each items for a practice so i'll give you the tips here all your assets all your assets that would be the part of your debit balance debit balance or side it's a very simple right your liabilities would be the part of your credit and your assets would be the part of your debit and there is a relation between assets and liabilities when your assets goes high then you ultimately your liabilities also you know goes high asset goes down then your liabilities also goes down why sir why there is a difference uh, why, why this correlation is and that's what we tie assets is equal to liabilities right so that's how we tally the balance it even but in a different way that also we look to the balance it so we'll discuss that later on uh, liabilities actual liabilities and all so that is something different but here let me just explain about so all your assets would be the part of your debit side or debit balance. And if you see, if I ask you, so can you prepare the accounting entries for an option contracts or for let's say stocks investment, or it can be any instrument. And now when we say investment, so that would be the part of your debit balance. Or when we say even current assets, that also would be the part of your debit balance. And when we say investment, then your investment or stock or bonds, whatever it is, let's say bond investment or stock investment, let's say or stock in stock account debit to when you invest, right? Cash and bank account credit. So that's how we prepare the accounting entries because stock is the part of assets and you all assets would be you know it's a part of debit side so that's how you can prepare the accounting entries and might be that you will have questions that cash is also part of your uh, asset then why we are recording to the debit side but here cash is decreasing and we have a rule right we have a rule so that again you can write it down in notebook if you haven't cash is the part of assets and if you see assets increases then that would be the part of your debit balance asset decreases that would be the part of your credit balance and in this example your asset is if you see assets when you invest automatically assets will go down cash will go down or cash will be utilized it means cash will decreased right and when it is decreased you need to record it by applying this rule so it's a very important rule this applies for all the assets important rule you can note it down in your book right you can note it down this in your book 
so it's a very 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 important one while preparing the accounting entries always first of all you should brief the accounting entries in this way if i say expense paid if i say expense paid when we say paid word which is linked with the cash when i say dividend received dividend received received is also directly linked with the cash so it means we have received cash paid it means we have paid cash paid means out cash will out from the business when we say out it will decrease the cash received it means cash in increase the cash so that will be the debit balance so that's how first of all you should while preparing the accounting entries i would suggest first of all brief the rule increased and decreased and then only start to prepare the accounting entries and then apply this rule check the cash movement whether there is a cash movement or not and then interpret or record the accounting entries and then after see your understanding and all okay so that's how you can prepare your balance it so balance it is also one of the integral or important component of your nav package nav package it's a very important segment you required you required you required data to calculate the nav is total assets so it means all assets then you required total liabilities right you required total liabilities plus share capital so which you can debit from the uh, your uh, whatever liabilities that you have but here so eventually we debit only this liabilities current minus long term so you don't need to debit the share capital from any anywhere so where whatever remaining portion would be that would be the value of your share capital so how so can you take one example yes i'll take one example so which you guys can understand how the share capital assets or liabilities works right so what the equation we have is total liabilities total assets plus capital right and outstanding share capital right outstanding share capital so this would be your equation so total assets minus total liabilities divided by number of outstanding share capital units number of outstanding share capital units or shares this is the rule which we apply but where you would see total liabilities of course in balance it right where you would see total liabilities balance it where you would see total outstanding capitals of course and balance it then end to end nav means what exactly end to end nav means now you can put a logic when we say end to end nav calculation it means it is a preparation of you balance it or at least trial i would say trial balance it not the uh, the original or audited one but it's a preparation of balance it so where you can prepare your trial balance or trial balance it so that part that comes under your end to end end to end accounting or nav calculation right so if i take example let's say you have total investment in stock one lakh 
right total total uh, investment uh, total liabilities it means let's say admin fees which you have is around 20000 so net asset should be or total asset should be how much 80000 80000 let's say you have a units units outstanding units let's say 10 if we just divide in this way 80000 divided by 10 units would be your 8000 maybe usd euro whatever currency that you have per units value right so it is simple correct how did i calculate total assets let's say i had only stock total liabilities let's say i had only admin fees around 20000 that i paid or it to pay or whatever liabilities that i had and then outstanding units so we here so we took 10 units as outstanding units so this one so total assets means after the deduction of liabilities around 80,000 80 it needs to be divided with the units and per units value would be 8,000 for per units correct and here in investment business what you would see right there would be lot of other instrument as well if i say if i take the example let's say same example we have a 10 units assume it we have a 10 units just assume it same example i'll just increase the other instrument let's say stock total stock total stocks total bonds total total options total abs mbs let's say this one 1 lakh 2 lakh 3 lakh can someone open the calci and cash at bank cash at bank let's say 50,000 and receivables, okay. dividend receivables, okay. dividend and interest receivables. How much? Let's say 1 lakh. Do the total calculation. Calculate the total assets. Uh, 11 lakh 50. 11 lakh? 50,000. So you have a total assets of but where you get the data for this total stocks of course transactions means trade processing teams where they record all this data because trade processing teams they work on abs mbs options bonds stocks so they record it trade processing teams they record the data and we require this data right to prepare we require total balances of stock account, bonds account, options, ABS, MBS. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to prepare the financial statements as simple as that. So you require data for all the items. And once you have a data for all the items, then you can record it in this way. Now you have a total assets. That would be your gross assets. Right? Gross assets. Let's say total liabilities that you have total liabilities admin fees legal fees fr fees subscription in advance then uh, any let's say payables payable of admin management 
legal admin let's say 5000 2000 let's say 2000 10000 that you have received and here total that we have payable payable of totals that we have let's assume 50000 so tell me the total liabilities Tell me the total liabilities guys, come on. 5,000, okay, 60, 60 or 40, 1 lakh, 1 lakh 5,000, correct? Sorry, not 1 lakh 5,000. 11 lakh 50,000. 50,000, 60,000 and this 9, 69,000 total liabilities, correct? Yes, no, maybe, but this is a 50, 50 plus 10, 60 and this 9. Yeah, yeah, 69. Yeah, you just summed it up. Yeah, 69,000 total liabilities that you have. And what's the rule which we have is NAV rule. Can anyone tell me this rule? NAV total assets, correct? Minus, this by outside Minus assets. total liabilities. Then do here. Now you have everything, put everything in formula total assets. minus total liabilities now tell me the net amount 81000 81000 how 11 lakh 50000 50, this amount is 11 lakh 50000 uh, 10 lakh uh, 81 10 lakh 81 10 lakh 81000 and that you need to divide by the need outstanding units which you have, right? So where I got these units? So I said like, we'll continue to the previous one example. Here we have 10 units, right? Same units that will carry forward here because we haven't changed the units. Now tell me what would be the need as asset value for per unit? One lakh eighty one. One lakh eighty one thousand. One lakh eighty one thousand for per unit that value would be. And this value also would be your gross asset value. The reason is for a mutual fund and sorry for a hedge fund, we calculate the performance fees. Right? We calculate the performance fees. Let's assume now you have a recent example. So it's a very important one. Very important means very important one. How we calculate the performance fees. Now I'll teach you that as well in five minutes. Let's assume it. Let's assume it. Beginning of the quarter. Beginning of the quarter. The high watermark which was decided. One lakh. One lakh was the high watermark. Or let's say 1 lakh was the base amount, capital amount. Base amount. High watermark was the set. High watermark was the set at 1 lakh. Sorry. High watermark means benchmark. Hold on. So high water market means your benchmark benchmark set at one lakh fifty thousand. So it means if the value goes beyond the high water mark, then only incentive fees incentive fees will be generated here. Incentive fees will be generated here or performance fees will be generated here right so this was the benchmark which was set at the at the beginning of the quarter and again at the end of the quarter here quarter end and what's the performance is current asset value 
how much we have come on 1 lakh 81000 current cav means current asset value or gav that you can say if you are not able to under this one how much we have 1 lakh 81000 or here you can say gav also gross asset value gross asset value right so, so now in this case now you can you can also you know uh, tell me will here incentive fees generate or not come on yeah, yeah, yeah. because it is already crossed 1 lakh 50 yeah 1 lakh 50 right and then your calculation of performance fees calculation would be gav or cav current minus asset high. value minus high water mark minus high water mark total amount would be that amount would be eligible for that amount would be eligible for the incentive fees calculation right remaining amount eligible for incentive fees or performance fees so what do you mean we'll calculate we have a gv or cav is 181 minus high watermark value 150000 total would be 31 Um, right yes no maybe still are you guys the right so 31000 yeah. so on this thou on this 31000 so incentive fees you can calculate let's say incentive fees ratio was or rate was 15% incentive fees incentive fees applied 15% on net gav gross asset value so this was the let's say term right this was the term let's assume it and here we'll calculate that 31000 into 15% divided by 100 just calculate it and let me know how much the value would be come on are come on you 4650 how much 4650 4650 but this is for a per year right and we just completed one quarter then divide with 4 come on how much double 162.5 double 161 this shouldn't be 5 divide by 4 there shouldn't be 4650 divided by 4 would be 116 one 162.5 so this would be your incentive fees that you need to pay for first quarter so how did i take four for it means in a one year there would be four quarters right there would be four quarters and here they have clearly mentioned the fees would be 15% incentive fees applied on a net gav for per year or for per annum right for per year for per year fees would be 4650 but if you just go back and check it so we already mentioned about it is a quarterly accounting for a first quarter begin and for first quarter end and that's when we calculated the incentive fees on 31st you know uh, 31000 amount right and the fees was for per annum basis and that's when you need to calculate for four quarters whatever fees that you calculate you need to split that fees 
and calculate it in this way and after this now here one more term which will come into picture crystallization how crystallization will come into picture so say it gav 181 minus the incentive fees how much 1161 remaining amount 179 how much come on guys One one six two point five one seven nine eight three seven point five. So in short, this fund, whatever fund, let's say GMT fund, the balance it was for GMT fund. GMT fund. Now try to understand this. GMT fund paid fees. Paid fees on this GAV. So next time, whenever you would calculate the uh, whatever fees that you want to calculate incentive fees, up to this amount you cannot calculate the incentive fees. Up to this amount you cannot calculate the incentive fees. Why? Because crystallization point it means. fees paid point so we have paid the fees or gmt fund paid the fees till 1798370.5 and now the if the fund or the investment manager want to set the high water mark high water mark will be set reset so here hwm will be reset on this amount so here maybe let's say 10% or 20% whatever that the benchmark was set let's assume it it was uh, 10% was the set high water mark high water mark if it is at 10% then you need to calculate 10% on this amount 10% would be 179 1798370 just need to you need to add 1798370 Point five. If you just say next high water mark would be how we calculate it. One seven nine. So next high water mark, how we can set? Next high water mark. Next high water mark, how we can set? So total paid prepaid amount. So what was that? One seven one seven nine eight three seven. One seven nine eight three seven point five plus ten percent high water mark. You can add. So that would be around one seven nine eight three three something, and that if you can add around one nine seven eight to one point two five, right? So this would be your new high water mark, and then after only incentive fees will be generated. Right. Then after only your incentive fees will be generated. Try to understand this also. So it means everything is depends on your balance sheet. Everything is depends on your balance sheet. Everything means everything. Initially you might feel like this is a very so simple, but now if you see everything is interlinked with. Each and every you know component which you record in the books of fund. Each and every component that is which is very much interlinked with each other. We haven't discussed about management fees also because 
after this after the first quarter when you calculate the management fees that will be due for the next quarter so that you need to add it even correct there are a number of other parameters also that you need to follow but anyways i hope now means how this balance it works or how you are rest things are depends on you know whatever assets or liabilities that you measured for that particular quarter correct and if you want me to summarize everything whatever we have discussed throughout this two to three sessions i'll just summarize write it down somewhere if you want so we require gav and nav is the same no gav no 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 it's not same so can you just explain what is the different of it now nav is aware so of it so this is your so, gav see this is your gav gross assets oh, where is that yes Mm. That's what we discuss this example. So well, you can you guys can link whatever that you want to. If you see here, this one is the gap. One zero eight one ten lakh eighty one zero zero. This is your gap. And when you pay the incentive fees, after the incentive fees. That would be your now and NAV net asset value for per unit. So GAV is NAV plus incentive fee. Yes, yeah. like. Uh. So once you pay the incentive fees, then that would be your net asset value, which you can transfer it to the investors when they send the redemption request to you. You always calculate your incentive fees also. So this becomes your gap. gross asset value 18100 for per unit this is your gap and uh, the uh, example which we covered where is that mm. where was that i think here we have this crystal now yep so this example you can refer as a here as said on gav right gross asset value on net gav which will charge the 15% incentive fees right when you charge 15% incentive fees so it means this your net asset value that would be at here 17837.5 so you can see this this is your nav then net asset value that you need to disclose to the investors the difference is very simple your incentive fees or performance fees plus your uh, whatever assets you have if you can add it that then becomes your gross asset value for a fund in a normal business we don't charge any incentive fees and that's what your total asset should be your gross assets same rule here we also apply it but only net asset that when you when you calculate net assets you need to consider your incentive fees sorry you right yeah i got lost I can't hear very well when the guys are mute. Can you just repeat uh, start from the crystallization fee? Crystallization. Yeah. Crystallization basically the point where yeah I can't hear very well. I can hear the echo. Hey uh Rajan can you please mute? Now now it's very clear now yeah this from here i i don't understand i lost from here okay so crystallization point basically where when you paid incentive fees right when you paid incentive fees it means your total value reached at original nav if you see original nav you had 181 right so this was your original nav but fund committed to pay 
the incentive fees around 15% right fund committed to pay 15% incentive fees on gav gav it means this amount so why i wrote this 181000 right 181000 where the 15% fees will be paid and when the 15% fees will be paid 15% fees how much that would be around 46.50 i think we calculated fees differently calculation was also something different so 15% incentive fees on gav right gross asset value for per annum so this one was the again uh, let's say statement that uh, you have with this particular fund so you need to calculate the 15% incentive fees on gav so what's the gav amount we have 80 181000 for per units how much okay so 181000 on uh let's say uh, that gav but we cannot directly charge fees on gav so what we can do here gav minus high water mark which was set one up to the the high water mark limit was this 150000 so you need to calculate in that way so here if you just on gav it means for you the gav would be something different but whatever gv that you have gv which was 181000 and uh, the uh, sorry and the uh, <coughs> hwm high watermark limit which was at 150000 so it means difference would be 30 1k so where you need to pay 30 uh, sorry where you need to pay 15% incentive fees on gross asset value so the statement if you see gross asset means this one this one was the high water mark gav minus your high water mark whatever the difference remaining would be you need to pay 15% on this amount so 15% when you calculate but this would be for per annum you need to calculate for per quarter because here we we are discussing about per quarter right 31000 divide uh, into 15% divided by 100 would be your 4650 50 that you need to divide between four quarters right your total would be One one six two point five. So this amount one one six two would be your incentive fees. You need to pay it from this amount, right? You need to pay it from the gross amount. If you see now, you can relate the statement, right? So fifteen percent incentive fees on GAV that you need to pay it from again GAV. so pay the incentive fees then after incentive fees paid your calculation would be wait a minute 18100 minus 1162.5 minus 1162.5 The remaining amount would be one seven eight three seven point five. So this one would be your net asset value. This portion would be your gross asset value, right? And again, to this amount, we call crystallization point.
crystallization point is nothing but on this amount or till this amount we paid the fees we paid the fees so you don't need to pay fees again up to this amount right you don't need to pay fees again up to this amount and automatically first high watermark was on 1 lakh 50 then automatically next high watermark would be on this or let's say maybe 10 percent on this amount and again guys high watermark is nothing but it's a basic basic investment returns right or minimum returns again your hwm would be based on inflation rate let's say inflation rate is seven to eight percent around that only you would see the high watermark rate also try to understand that as well high watermark which would be nearby the your inflation rate go and check it high watermark wouldn't be like uh, 20 percent 50 percent no that is not even feasible that would be based on your inflation rate if the infl inflation rate is eight to nine percent then around nine to ten percent would be your high watermark so high watermark is nothing but it's an expense of the investment or minimum return of the investment and that will very much will relate with the treasury bills yield or return let's say government bonds return is around 10 percent and you would see high watermark also would be around same 10 percent or 9 percent that would be the baseline and your government bonds or government instruments return would be very much uh, you know linked with the inflation of that particular country if the inflation is 10 percent bond return also you would see around 10 percent right so understand that treatment also then if you see this amount 17837.5 crystallization point amount till here you don't need to pay next time for next quarter you don't need to pay uh, the incentive fees on this amount right so let's say next quarter next quarter same amount the um, next high watermark set for a next quarter quarter two high watermark which was high watermark which was set 10 percent right 10 percent would be 197821.25 right this one would be the high watermark for a next quarter and let's say total assets total assets total assets when you calculate your balance sheet total assets reached at 1,50,000 so will you pay any incentive is here on this total assets in next quarter total assets for per units reached at 1,50,000 will you pay incentive fees here yes no maybe no, no incentive no incentive fee yes sir because it has not crossed the benchmark no? it has not reached to the benchmark or level benchmark or high water mark so no incentive fees even though fund reached, let's say not this level but fund which is at same level let's say next quarter also which is at same level there is no change in it let's assume total assets which are at same 197 821.25 if it is at a same level also no incentive fees will no, be no, paid no, exactly. or generated because fund has not reached to the the predefined level only reached fees will be generated only above this level fees will be generated above the high water mark above the high water mark so in this case fees will not be generated in next quarter okay so i think we should stop here so i'll take your questions guys so you can ask questions as much as you can
So I'll take your questions. So I'm done with the today's session. And even though I'm done with the balance it also. But few Video things are important I that I'll help you to link up the PNL balance it everything. So 15 to 20 minutes that will spend or max to max 30 minutes will spend on the same stuff in next session. And the possible questions that you may expect around this discussion. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we do have a uh, hurdle rate also, right? Hurdle rate? What is the hurdle rate? Private equity, not. Just want in to understand. We have in hurdle rate, right? But what is that hurdle rate? I want to understand. I don't know. What is that? High, high watermark is also one of the benchmark and hurdle rate also one of the benchmark, right? So I don't know that. So if you know it, just explain it. What is that hurdle mark? Hurdle rate mark. It's an industry rate or benchmark. So in some funds, we have like a high watermark and a hurdle rate. So hmm. few of the funds, they will be taking one series of the hurdle rate and high watermark, then only will be paying the incentive fee. So few people are considered only hurdle mark and few of the people are considering both the cases. Huddle mark mm -hmm. and uh, high watermark. So there is, so, it means only we have a high watermark. What you said, hurdle mark and all. So that will be under this. So now I'll again brief that. High watermark always comes with the rates. Right. High watermark is the oral mm -hmm. benchmark. Right. High watermark is the oral benchmark level. And when you say any hurdle rate, soft rate, hard rate, different different rates when come into picture so let's say high watermark is 20 percent let's assume so in 20 percent you would see benchmark level benchmark level 15 percent right benchmark it means that you can compare with the any other different things it can be you can compare with the inflation cost cost of investment or uh, the expenditure of investment and then you can set and 5% would be the actual actual that the investor want the benefit 5% want the investor want the benefit but total again they'll charge high water mark they'll charge it 20% around same amount that you can charge 20% 30% 10% that you can set only only the only uh, the dividation between that whatever total amount you gonna set or charge or decide here nobody is paying anything to anyone try to understand this also here which is all about up to which limit that we can pay the incentive fees the point is all about up to which limit we can pay the incentive fees Right, whether it is soft, hard, any kind of A, B, C, D, E, U, F, G, if you see, those are like just terms, right? But that would be included in your main benchmark or main uh, high watermark. It is just difference between your cost. Let's say benchmark up to that, that would be your cost. So nobody pay, uh, everyone want the cost of investment in return, right? And apart from that, leave it in some sort of in a profit also the exception or exemption the, the government provide exemption to you in terms of tax kind of things so in that way correct and then you become your benchmark or incentive fees whatever that you pay on the basis of high watermark and all come on Any other question or shall I stop this recording then? Sir, uh, crystallization date will be set uh, like, hello. Yes, yes, go ahead. I'm audible, Rajan, I'm audible. Hello, I'm audible. Guys, I'm audible, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. 
So this last two days. Yeah. So crystallization date will be set uh, like the every annually quarter, or the... yeah every quarter that uh, the uh, fund managers or investors they can set. But eventually that everything that they that they defined already right for entire duration for for that particular year everything will be decided at the beginning of the quarter only and that's what we follow the as a fund accountant we follow the deadlines right so on which day that we need to calculate fees crystallization everything that already will be predefined and on the basis of that we just follow it as an accountant and that's what your deadlines also come into picture but yes everything every every quarter you would see some sort of changes on the basis of performance of the fund okay so as an assignments i'll give the assignments same example that you can prepare okay same example it means you can create a dummy examples and you can prepare it take the screenshot of the total assets liabilities so you can just take the exam uh, you know prepare it and with accounting entries that i want not only not only the uh, you know the same example that doesn't make any sense you can take the example prepare it this you can take this screenshot so in this way you can prepare one example but you can add more more uh, you know content from the uh, balance it also if you want you can add more the items in terms of fees options contracts just create one dummy example or else i'll prepare this and i'll send it to you so you can prepare that as an assignment along with the accounting entries okay along with the accounting entries so you can prepare that and submit as an assignment so don't miss on assignment guys it's a very important one and also impact as well so try to put a logic what if if i record it any incorrectly take the scenarios let's you create it on your own let's say i forgot to record uh, the receivables check the impact <coughs> before the <coughs> payables or receivables what was the nav after the receivables what would be the nav this compare both try to brief those scenarios as well that will really help you to you know understand the this fund accountings or different terms how that works and all in depth okay so we'll see you in next session so i'll take a leave now so uh, tomorrow 11 o'clock class or like uh... Uh, no tomorrow tomorrow that you can attend normal class on a weekend that i have a other batches guys that's what we have a weekend batches i'll allow you to join my other batches at 2 to 4 pm that you can attend so in morning that i cannot schedule separately for you that's what on a week uh, in between the week that we are discussing on this this would be your continuous series only it will be on this uh, monday sorry tuesday wednesday and friday three days and on weekend you can attend my other batches if you want i'll send yeah, you the link that... yeah send the link please okay this would be your main series from the basics that we'll discuss and we already started it